we paid all of our foreign debts. Public servants were paid every single month on time. Public servants, including nurses. And I could go on and on. Public transport ran. When we did not want to spend foreign exchange on buying trucks for the Sanitation Service Authority, we employed local race, uh, race haulers to supplement what was happening at the Sanitation Service Authority. That is what we did. Nobody in Barbados or outside of Barbados can get from the Jerome Stewart to feel ashamed about what happened between 2008 and 2018. It was a glorious period. When you walk around Barbados now and you see all of these photovoltaic farms for the purpose of generating renewable energy, when you see photovoltaic uh, panels on people's homes, understand that Frondel Stewart piloted himself a new electric light and power act in Barbados when we were in office to make it possible for households, independent power producers, and the Barbados Light and Power to generate electricity in this country. I piloted the legislation myself. And I take credit for all the photovoltaic panels that I see on homes now, and all of the farms that I see being there now. That resulted from the electric light and power legislation that I, as Minister of Energy and Prime Minister, piloted through the Parliament of Barbados. The government of the Democratic Labour Party, between 2008 and 2018, passed a piece of legislation that was being debated in this country since about 1969. Barrett didn't pass it. Tom Adams didn't pass it. St. John didn't pass it. Sandiford didn't pass it. Arthur didn't pass it. Thompson didn't pass it. Frondel Stewart got it passed. The Employment Rights Act to protect the rights of workers at the workplace. When you hear the Employment Rights Tribunal handing down decisions, it is because of the Employment Rights Act. Right through my lifetime, I had to sit back and watch some of Barbados's brightest students having to leave the secondary schools at which they got our levels and either go on to Queen's College, to Lodge, to Harrison College, or Common Mayor. Only because their schools did not have six forms. We took a decision that some of the newer secondary schools like Springer Memorial and St. Leonard's and Ellerslie should have six forms as well. So that the elitism in education would be removed. And those schools have six forms. And Foundation School has one, and St. Michael's School has one. And Foundation School's first year, first two years as a six form institution, it got a Barbados scholarship. St. Michael's School just got an exhibition, and Foundation got an exhibition again. And Springer Memorial has been performing resplendently as a result of those initiatives. That is what we did. So I don't apologize for what happened in, in 2008, 2018. Richard Seeley presided over the largest number of tourists ever to come to Barbados in 2016 and in 2017. Record arrivals. We don't apologize for that. The most aggressive attack on nursery education in Barbados since independence 
happened now to the Democratic Labour Party between 2008 and 2018 when we worked along with the Maria Holder Trust to build nursery schools to accommodate children under the age of five. So that was what, those were some of the things that we did. When we left office, there were seven registered offshore medical centers in Barbados that came through the front door, stated their position, satisfied us that they were qualified to do what they were saying to do, they, they, they were saying they were able to do, and we registered them. Seven. We didn't rob anybody in the Caribbean of any offshore medical center. Ross was in Dominica for 40 years. I ended up in Barbados. You must ask yourself how and why. But that, all of that was just to let you know what was happening in Barbados during that period. But obviously, we were going through a financial crisis. The world was going through its worst financial crisis up to then. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II went to the London School of Economics and asked the economists there, how could you all be so bright and, no and none of you could tell us that this thing was coming? It was a serious crisis. And we had to manage it. And we managed it successfully. Now tonight, as a result of managing it, of course, in, in order to make sure that we paid civil servants every month on time, and I don't apologize for this either, we had to get the central bank sometimes to facilitate us in order that we could pay civil servants and keep people employed. I don't apologize for that. We were in a crisis. The central bank basically doing it again. But no government of Barbados since independence or before independence, but of course before independence they couldn't do it because it wouldn't have had the power to do it, has borrowed more money than the present Barbados Labour Party government has borrowed over the last three years. No government of Barbados has borrowed in three years as much foreign money as the present Barbados Labour Party government has borrowed. Now, look, let me tell you something. The writer, E.M. Forrester, once said that everything must be like something. And the only question you have to ask is, what is this like? But let me tell you what it's like. When Errol Barra left office in 1976, Barbados says foreign debt was $50.2 million. Between 1976 and 1986, under Tom Adams, and for the year under St. John, but St. John didn't borrow, as far as I'm aware. The foreign debt of Barbados increased by 1,000%. Whereas external debt service in 1985 was $106 million. By 1990, it had climbed to $305 million every year. That debt, paying back Tom Adams' debts, and the Labour Party's debts choked Erskine Sandiford, choked his government, put it under pressure, and led him into the IMF. Because, of course, along with that came the international recession resulting from the Second Gulf War. And let me tell you this. 
we are going to find ourselves in the same position again. When external debt service time comes, we are going to be in serious trouble. We are in an IMF program now. As recently as today, I sat down and read the better part of that IMF agreement again. And I think it is paragraph 28 of one of the sections that caught my attention. The IMF said, based on what we are getting Barbados to do, words to this effect, we are comfortable that Barbados will be able to pay us back the money we are lending it. That's what the IMF is concerned about, you know, getting back the money they lend us. They have not come here to be any do-gooders. They are lenders of money, and they must get it back. And that is what we have, we are going to have to deal with in Barbados when the time comes. When when certain interests wanted my government to go to the IMF, let me tell you what happened. Rating agencies, Standard and Poor's and Moody's, embarked upon a carnival of downgrades. A carnival of downgrades saying the outlook was not favorable and this and that and oh, no. on and on they went. And the Barbados Labour Party was enjoying itself because the DLP was getting the DLP government was getting downgraded. Now you haven't heard about any downgrades lately. You have not heard about any downgrades lately. When we were getting downgraded. Unemployment was between 9 and 10 percent. It is over 25 percent now. I don't mind the, the 70 percent that the Central Bank is talking about. That's rubbish. And you are not hearing about any downgrade. The debt to GDP ratio in Barbados, when we were getting all these downgrades, was about 135, 40 percent. It is over 150% now, and you are not hearing about any downgrades. The economy that we handed to Mayor Motley, a $10 billion economy, has been substantially reduced over the last three years. You heard Clay's Masco say, that in 2021, things in Barbados are so bad that we are back at 1994 standards or 1997 standards today. 1997, I think it was say. That is how bad things are. But you're not hearing any downgrades. You know why, you're not, why you are not hearing any downgrades? Let me tell you why. If a country is in an IMF program, No rating agency, I don't care where it comes from, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, or any of the others, no rating agency will go into that country and downgrade its credit, its credit rating. Because that would be another way of saying that the IMF ain't know what it's doing. And you can't make the IMF look bad because when you call in the IMF, you're supposed to be calling in magicians. So if the rating agencies then say that the outlook is not favorable, it means the IMF ain't know what you're doing. So you are not going to hear about any downgrades. But things in Barbados tonight are substantially worse than they were in 2018 when the Democratic Labour Party uh, handed over the government to the Barbados Labour Party. 